Welcome to Bible Stories, where we dive deep into the pages of Scripture to uncover the most profound and sometimes shocking stories that the Bible has to offer. In today's episode, we're exploring a tale that is both harrowing and thought-provoking, a story of betrayal, violence, and the devastating consequences of turning away from God's ways. This is not a story for the faint-hearted, but it's one that holds crucial lessons for us all. As we journey together through this narrative, we'll unravel the real reason behind one man's horrifying actions towards his wife and what this dark chapter in biblical history can teach us today. Before we dive in, I want to take a moment to invite you to join our growing community here at Bible Stories. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Don't forget to like this video if you find it informative and share your thoughts in the comments below. I love hearing your insights and questions. And of course, share this video with your church group, family and friends. Together, let's spread the knowledge and wisdom found in the Word of God. Did you know that a man of God once dismembered his wife into twelve pieces to seek revenge? Yes, you heard that right, he completely cut her body apart. This story is not for the faint of heart, so make sure you're 18 or older before continuing. Welcome to God's Word Unmasked, where we delve deep into biblical history to uncover hidden truths and captivating stories. If you enjoy our content, consider subscribing. We promise to keep bringing you insightful and engaging videos. According to the Bible, the Israelites were governed by God through judges or kings. These judges were divinely appointed to deliver Israel from its enemies and provide leadership and guidance. The Bible even mentions that the Spirit of God would enter these leaders, enabling them to lead the Israelites effectively. However, a recurring theme in the book of Judges is the phrase, In those days Israel had no king, everyone did as they saw fit. This highlights the people's constant disobedience and idolatry, even though God was meant to be their ruler. Before judges or kings began to rule again, many significant events took place, including a particularly disturbing story that is only suitable for mature audiences. So, if you're ready, let's dive in. As you may know, Israel was comprised of 12 tribes, all descended from Jacob, who was later renamed Israel by God. Jacob the son of Isaac, had twelve sons, who each became the patriarch of one of the tribes, Judah, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Zebulun, Issachar, Dan, Gad, Asher, Naphtali, Joseph, and Benjamin. The tribe of Levi was unique because they were considered priests and had no tribal territory of their own. In the book of Judges, it is recounted that during a time when Israel had no king appointed by God, terrible things were happening. A man from the tribe of Levi who lived in Judah took a concubine from Bethlehem. A concubine in those days was essentially a secondary wife. The woman became angry with her husband and fled to her father's house in Bethlehem, where she stayed for about four months. When the husband realized she wasn't coming back, he decided to go after her, taking along a servant and an extra donkey. When he arrived at her father's house, the woman welcomed him in, and her father was delighted to meet him. The father urged the man to stay for a while, so he did, and they spent three days eating and drinking together. On the fourth day, they were ready to leave early, but the woman's father insisted they have breakfast first. Initially, the husband refused, but the father-in-law kept urging him until he agreed. They ended up spending the night again. The next morning, they were up early, and once more the father-in-law pleaded with the husband to stay just for the day, so they enjoyed another day of feasting. As evening approached, the father-in-law suggested they stay another night since it was getting late, but this time the man was determined to leave. 
They managed to travel as far as Jerusalem before nightfall. As they reached Jerusalem, the servant suggested they stop and stay there for the night, but the master refused, saying, We will not turn aside to the city of foreigners who are not Israelites. We will go to Gibeah. So they continued their journey and reached Gibeah, which belonged to the tribe of Benjamin, as the sun was setting. Unable to find a place to stay, and with no one offering them shelter, the man, his wife, the servant, and the extra donkey sat in the city square. While they were resting, an old man returned to the city after a long day of work in the fields. Seeing the travelers in the square, he approached them and asked where they were coming from and where they were headed. The husband explained their situation, saying that although they had everything they needed, no one had offered them a place to stay. The old man greeted them, saying, Peace be with you. Let me take care of all your needs, but please don't stay out on the street. So he brought the travelers into his home, fed their donkeys, and they all washed their feet and enjoyed a meal together. While they were relaxing, a group of wicked men from the city surrounded the house and began banging on the door. They demanded that the old man bring out the guest who had come to his house so that they could have their way with him. In the Bible, the phrase to know him or knew her often refers to sexual relations, like when it says that Adam knew his wife and she bore a son named Seth. If you're finding this story interesting and learning something new, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Now, back to the story. Hearing the demands of the wicked men, the master of the house went outside to speak with them. He pleaded, No, my brothers, please don't do such an evil thing. This man has come into my house, and I cannot allow this wickedness. Here, take my daughter, who is a virgin, and this man's concubine instead. Do what you wish with them, but don't commit such a vile act against this man. Despite the old man's pleas, the wicked men refused to listen. In desperation, the husband pushed his concubine outside. The men took turns abusing her throughout the night until dawn. The woman managed to return to the house and collapsed at the door where her husband was staying, and there she remained until morning. When her husband got up the next morning and opened the door to leave, he found his concubine lying there. He said to her, get up, let's go, but there was no response. Realizing she was dead, he placed her on his donkey and returned home. Once there, he took a knife and gruesomely cut her body, including her bones, into twelve pieces, which he sent throughout the regions of Israel. When the tribes of Israel learned about this horrific crime, they were outraged, declaring that nothing this terrible had happened since Israel had left Egypt. They knew they had to take action, so the entire congregation of Israel came together with 400,000 soldiers ready to draw their swords. The people asked the husband, Tell us how this evil came to pass. The man explained, I arrived in Gibeah of Benjamin with my concubine to spend the night. But the men of Gibeah rose against me, surrounded the house, and intended to kill me. They abused my concubine so severely that she died. So I took her body, cut it into pieces, and sent them throughout all of Israel because of the wickedness committed here. The man then asked for their advice on what should be done. One of them declared, None of us will return home until we have punished the village of Gibeah. A tenth of our army will be chosen to supply food, while the rest of us will destroy Gibeah for this atrocity. All the people agreed to go against the city of Gibeah and the tribe of Benjamin. The tribes of Israel sent messengers to the tribe of Benjamin, demanding, What is this wickedness that has been done among you? Now hand over the evil men of Gibeah so that we can put them to death and remove this evil from Israel. However, the tribe of Benjamin refused to listen or surrender the guilty men. 
Instead, they gathered their forces to prepare for battle against the other tribes of Israel. Before the war began, the Israelites, excluding the tribe of Benjamin, went up to the house of God to seek guidance, asking, Which of us should go first into battle? Who should lead the charge in battle against the tribe of Benjamin? The Israelites asked, and the Lord replied, Judah shall go first. So the men of Israel marched out to fight the Benjamites. The tribe of Benjamin came out from Gibeah and killed 22,000 Israelite soldiers that day. Heartbroken, the Israelites went before the Lord, weeping until evening. They asked God, Should we go into battle again against our brothers, the Benjamites? The Lord responded, Yes, go and fight them. On the second day, the Israelites drew near to the Benjamites once more. But again, they were struck down. Another 18,000 men fell that day. Distraught, all the people of Israel went up to the house of God, where they wept, fasted until evening, and offered burnt and peace offerings to the Lord. They inquired again, should Welcome we continue to, to battle our brothers, the Benjamites, or should we stop? And the Lord answered, Go, for tomorrow I will deliver them into your hands. On the third day, the Israelites went to battle against the Benjamites, mm -hmm. and this time they emerged victorious. The Israelites destroyed 25 100 Benjamite soldiers that day. The entire city was slaughtered, and it was set ablaze. Only a handful of Benjamite soldiers managed to escape. After this, the men of Israel made a solemn vow, declaring that none of them would ever give their daughters in marriage to the men of Benjamin. They lamented the loss, saying, One of our tribes has been cut off from Israel due to the evil they have done. Before we wrap up, Remember the message from Galatians 5.13. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. Paul stresses that while Christians are blessed with freedom and free will from God, it should be used wisely and responsibly. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Join us next week to uncover more stories. Before you go, I want to take a moment to express my deep gratitude to every subscriber. We're on a journey to reach 300,000 subscribers. By subscribing and sharing our videos, you're helping us bring you the best quality content, filled with hidden insights from various sacred texts. This channel explores not just the Bible, but also the stories from the Ethiopic Bible and the Apocrypha. Be sure to check the description box below for supporting documents and biblical references. As we conclude this intense and eye-opening story, we are reminded of the profound impact our choices can have, not just on ourselves, but on those around us and even on entire communities. The actions of one man led to devastating consequences, serving as a powerful reminder of the ripple effects of sin and the critical need to seek God's guidance in all that we do. This story challenges us to reflect on our own lives and the importance of living according to God's will. If this story has touched you, I encourage you to take a moment to reflect and share your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear your insights and continue this important conversation with you. And if you haven't already, now is the perfect time to subscribe to our channel. By subscribing, liking and sharing this video, you're helping to spread the valuable lessons of the Bible to even more people. Let's keep the discussion alive by sharing these stories with our church groups, family and friends. Together, we can deepen our understanding of God's Word and its relevance in our lives today. Thank you for being a part of the Bible Stories community. I look forward to exploring more with you in our next episode. Until then, may God bless you and guide you always.